protests have broken out in multiple cities after former Prime Minister Imran Khan was arrested by paramilitary police. What you're seeing here is Khan supporters breaking through the gates of the general headquarters of Pakistan's military, the army. In fact, earlier, police in Raikir smashed a window, very dramatic footage here, to get Khan, who was inside Islamabad's high court. Khan says the corruption charges against him are political, and his party calls the arrest, quote, an abduction. For more now from Khan supporters and how they're responding to this arrest, I want to bring in Dr. Shireen Mazari. She's the senior vice president of Khan's political party in Pakistan, Tariq E. Insaf. And I want to thank you for joining us to give us more information on a developing story. Um, you know, it was clear to me anyway that Mr. Khan was tipped off about this somehow. Uh, his video was quite explicit and it indicates that he knew that he would be arrested. That your party claims that all of this is politically motivated. What proof do you have of that? We know it's politically motivated because the charges uh, that have been framed, there are over a hundred cases and a lot of them are fri frivolous. He uh, named one army general as being responsible for the two assassination plots against him, which uh, uh, both were unsuccessful. And on that itself, I'm just giving you one example. He was charged with treason. So there's an absurdity about the cases, but more important, I want to correct, he was not arrested. He was abducted. He was in the Islamabad High Court, in the court premises. The paramilitary troops, the rangers came in. They broke the windows of the High Court building room where Khan was. And they, he was in a wheelchair because of his injury from the first assassination attempt. And he was dragged. He was beaten on his head with wooden sticks, which had nails in them. He was then specially beaten on, kicked on his foot, that uh, the whole leg which was injured, he was dragged from the wheelchair on the ground and then abducted by the paramilitary forces. So let's be clear, this was not an arrest. This was an abduction. And what Khan had warned uh, repeatedly that if anything like that happened, we would not be able to control and the anger of the people of Pakistan. And that anger is now being vented all across Pakistan. Well, and, and that's, but I want, I want to get to that. I, I want to get to that, but that seems to be something that your party is encouraging. And I want to ask you that question. I do want to point out that the government says that this is about uh, corruption charges for which they say they have proof. But I have to ask you, you just said it, right? Pakistan is already at an incredibly fragile point. Why ask for protesters to hit, get to the streets when you know it is a d dangerous situation for them and for the country, we've already had one supporter of your former prime minister and your party shot dead. And we've had another one killed today in Quetta in the process. The point is, we did not get any notice of the court case, the case that they're now citing. The, uh, neither Khan's lawyers nor Mr. Khan was sent any notice or legal notice at all about that case. So clearly, this was not a legal arrest by any standard, even by our legal standards. Secondly, our people, we have been trying to get elections. And the problem is that this government does not want to follow the constitution and have elections. And people have been, they can't control the people's anger. We've never had demonstrations which are not peaceful. But today, after what happened to Khan, the abduction, the physical violence against him, which, and by the way, not only him, lawyers in the court were beaten, the staff of the high court was beaten. And if you look at the videos that are on social media, it was like an invasion force of the paramilitary force entering into court premises. Indeed, 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 the video, indeed, the video was, indeed, the video was quite dramatic. But I have to ask you again, if you can directly answer the question, why not ask for a moment of calm? We can see from the video here that this is an extremely dangerous situation for your party and its supporters who are out on the streets. Why escalate things at this moment? What will that achieve? Absolutely. We are not escalating. Our vice chairman immediately in the morning sent a message that people on the street, if they're protesting, which is their constitutional right, should do it peacefully. But things are out of our control. This is an organic protest. It's not just PTI workers. It's a general public which has been seething 
against what has been happening, against the economic situation, the rising inflation, the rising food prices. So people have been seething, and this has been the last straw for the people. And once things spiral like this, it's very difficult for any leadership to ask them to stay calm. Only Imran Khan could have stopped them from getting violent, could have controlled the crowd. But what they've, since they've abducted him, he is not there to calm the crowd. I, I take, and it is not within I, I, the party's leadership's control anymore. I, I, take, I take your point, but there can be a call for calm by you and for many others from your party. And I'm sure uh, Mr. Khan knows how to get a message out to his supporters and the rest of the country if he wants to. I want to leave no, that alone he, for a moment. He, Let me leave that alone for a moment. He but cannot, he cannot, excuse me, he cannot get a message out. We don't know where he is. He has uh, been abducted and kept I'm, in the custody I'm sure of the I, military. And he, so the, he can't get any message out. We have tried to tell our political rep party leadership, the second and third tiers who are in different cities, but these are not our party workers only. This is the ordinary public over whom we do not have much control. Okay, but and we will, we will, we will await. I, I have to wait. I have to leave that issue alone. We will await your pleas for calm then as we see that things can rapidly you know, get out of control on the streets and that it is dangerous. I want to ask you, though, about the military's role in all of this. You know Mr. Khan has been accused of at one point being backed by the military and now being abandoned by it. What do you think? What role is the military playing at this hour with all of this? It's not a question of being abandoned. It's a question of the way that the regime change occurred, where the military literally the, took our allies and put them in Sindh House, which is a particular place in Islamabad, where they intervened directly, where the then military uh, chief, the army chief, uh, General Bajwa, publicly before, while our government was still there, he came out in a public statement and disagreed with the prime minister's position on foreign policy issues where Mr. Bajwa then uh, and the uh, military did not allow uh, when Khan uh, was at, uh, the assassination again, attempt against him, Khan was not allowed to file an FIR, the first information report, naming people that he alleged were behind his assassination. So there is no rule of law or civilian writ anymore in Pakistan. It's not just a question of the military abandoning one group or and supporting another. Mm -hmm. This goes beyond that. This goes towards undermining uh, your constitution mm -hmm. and your parliamentary democracy. Mm -hmm. And this is a problem that we're facing for the last year. Okay. Uh, Dr. Shireen, I'm sorry, I thank you for your time on what are incredibly uh, dangerous times ahead uh, for Pakistan. Appreciate it.